time for Halloween. I could go as Michael Jackson, I suppose. Thriller, something like that. It's starting to work again. I still have to be a bit careful, so thank you very much for all your well wishes. Having made a rookie mistake and getting a door slammed onto my hand. It's getting better. I'm not ready to do hands-on tasks just yet. I need to be a little bit more careful. I don't want to drop an orchid. So welcome to my end of October. Little tour of the patio. And this is a shrub. One of my favorite shrubs in these climates. It's called La Dama de Noche. And I think she looks absolutely beautiful with the late afternoon sun shining on her. She starts to exude a beautiful fragrance at around 6 p.m. And I have this one now wafting into my dining room area. And I thought I would share it with you because, yeah, she does make a mess on the patio, but who cares? I love the fragrance of La Dama de Noche. There's something so soothing and calming about it. I appreciate your time. Don't want to waste your time. I hope that you maybe have some time to join me on my little tour today. And I'm in the west side of my patio. Michael McCarthy was asking about how the offshoots are doing of my cracked Chao Praia here. I would say they're doing great. Look at this, going up and up and up and up and up. Both of them doing absolutely wonderfully. And the distance between the two stems is also remarkable. It's almost double that of the older stem. So yeah, my Chao Praia is back doing her thing. Probably won't get any blooms out of her until maybe 2023, but at least she is alive. And the top is growing pretty well as well. It is not as shriveled and desiccated as you can see the older leaves are. The top is growing nicely, so I'm not opening that cover up just yet, but there seems to be coming hydration through the second crack right at the crown. How it's happening, I don't know. One day we will unwrap all these pub filter materials that I've tied to the roots to give them more humidity and to help me out. And it's been working a treat. Check this out. I have branching on root tips. If I can get there, let's do that. Look, isn't that amazing? They've split. I love it when that happens. All right, let's go down to the deep south, moving away from the west. Let's go have a look, see how the Angraecums are doing. All I can say in general, everybody here is fine. Got Kimmy here. I'm gonna have to tie this growth right here to the Choya log a little bit better because length. <laughs> That's good, I like it. I think there's a root gonna come out of that kink right there, that apex. There's something coming out and I believe that is a root, which is great. Maybe if I can get this root to grow, and maybe start to train it down, the root itself could be my anchor one day. One day, not right now. So I've got Crestwood tomorrow start doing very well. Fastuosa is there on the right, also hanging in there. And here's Didieri. Mm, I cannot get that leaf to stop dying back, but I've got another new leaf coming and it doesn't look to me like the crown is compromised, but we've had a similar situation with leaf dieback on a tip this season. Most annoying, but most importantly, there are new roots growing. So she is not struggling. It's just, I must have gotten some fertilizer doses off again. Here I've got Encyclia Garciana. We just saw her and my Epidendrum Schweinfortianum right here. Also doing fine. Nothing outside the ordinary. I'm just glad it's doing fine. What I can show is my bossery is growing a spike. There we are, just one. But I am glad that it's there nonetheless. All the root tips of my Crestwood Tomorrow Star have extended. <laughs> I'm gonna be in so much trouble when I bring this orchid inside. Oof, but I love it, love it, love it. My Plectrominthus caudatus is probably history. 
and I've never made a video on it because I don't know what to tell you. But it's been losing leaves very, very quickly, even though I started seeing some new root growth. This is not looking good, but okay, we tried. Love the orchid. If it goes, that's a shame. But there's only so much I can do with the conditions that I have. And I'll just have to forgive myself for overestimating my competence in being able to grow a Plectromintus caudatus. Dumelia arborescens, doing great with all the little plantlets at the base. And so is Green Hopper, still with us. Not a fast grower, by no means. Cousin It is chilling out here, no need for shades. He is in the shade. And I brought my Brassavola flagellaris over here because of the high levels of light it was getting where it normally lives. And I've got Stan, the man here, doing great. Gets a jug of water every day. And that is definitely the trick. Water, water, water. Just to stop these sprinkled leaves. Now that I've got him where I can reach him, the new growths are now starting to grow clean because I can just pour water onto him. Yeah, he's doing well and getting enormous. And then here is my little hawk, Sonia. Look at that. That's what I call progress. We've got all the little new fans developing on the top and lots and lots of root tips. And here are my Vandaglossum Alexandra, also settling in nicely. I've got roots going now. I've got my Pomilla still. No problem with the Pomilla just yet, but I'm cautiously optimistic. Seeing as I lost one, I'm not confident, but that little middle leaf is growing and that's all I'm asking for, it's progress. And then here's my Pretermisa, also settled in very, very nicely and they are just going to have to mature for us to see blooms. And I have a selection here of Rapiculus lelias that I'm keeping an eye on. This one I'm going to have to lower in the pot, but I have to wait for my hand to be able to handle things without dropping anything. But that needs to get lower in the pot. I don't like how high it is, I'm not comfortable with that. It's also growing a new growth in the back there. And I'm glad about that because I don't like that. I think this is my Enspelzii and it did bloom for me, but I don't like how high, it, I don't know if it's lifting itself out of the pot, but I don't see any kind of good root growth that would do that. So yeah, I got to get into this one. I want it down deeper. All right. And something I'm very happy about, my little weak Coxinia here. I did a community post showing all the new roots that were coming. Hooray! And look at, it's got a new eye coming. Oh, I'm going to be okay with this one. And that leaf is not quite ready to drop yet, or are you? Yeah, we're getting some collateral decline in the back, but my goodness, as long as I've got roots, that eye, happy days. So I still have all my summer bloomers outside. This is a little bit insane, but <laughs> sweet memory is still holding on to a bloom for dear life. But here is my white bridal and the roots are starting to grow nicely down into the media. It's taking a little bit longer. That is temperature based. My Mr. Sidium Capensi also is doing OK. I might lose that other leaf right there, but that's also to be expected. It's not growing any more new roots, but I think what I have in the lava rock is going to be enough. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. And my little Moschicola as well. Just hoping that it'll, it'll be enough. That left root, the white one has grown into the pot. Another root tip is just starting to grow again. I'm hopeful, very, very hopeful. Let's go up here. And then here are the gifts from Anna. Thank you once again. Here's my Lutio Alba, both of them. There's a new root growing on the cork bark and you would think I could intervene now. Again, not comfortable working with my hand on delicate projects like these, so they, they can wait. They can be on their cork over the winter and figure it out when the time comes in 2022. What I want to show you is my Polysema. <laughs> We're going to have a first time bloomer. 
This is Aberrant crossed with Polysema. Look at the size of these two new growths. Remember I did a video about orchids gaining momentum. I said there were more <laughs> and this should have been in that video. I just didn't want to make that video so long, but look at this insanity. And I thought that the back growth here was really, really good at the beginning of 2021. I love that growth. I love this growth as well. And it's just gone up another notch. Look at them. Aren't they gorgeous with that color? Oh, I love it. I love this bronze color. And yeah, we're going to get blooms. This is going to be a show. Spike there, spike there, spike there. This is going to be great. First time bloomer for my Aberrant's Cross with Polysema. Very, very tough. Look at that. They're like candles. Perfect. And all my little Rapiculus Lelias here are doing rather, rather well. Can't complain at this point in time. I'm in the process of removing the moss around the base of the orchids, just because tis the season, tis the season. But, you know, some growths have matured, some new growths are starting to mature. There's no sign of any blooms at this point in time, but I'm just happy they're doing really well. My Harpophila is sporting a sheath for the last couple of months. I can't feel anything in that sheath. Mine usually blooms around January, so maybe that's what's taking so long. But it's doing fine. And my beautiful Albariguenses here is growing another new growth. For me, that is super important. Of course, it's never bloomed for me, but the fact that it's growing another new growth this time of year, that would make it three new growths in 2021. Can't ask for more than that. And I'm gonna show you a little update on the Chantilly Lace Twinkle I got from Tropical Orchids in Portugal. And I got a refund for her because when I peeled the sheath back after the unboxing, there is rot in the stem. And that's no good. There's no other viable eye. I can't see this orchid surviving. I have her here, I'm watching her. I haven't binned her. They've been kind enough to refund me. Something which Floralia has yet to do for the two that I paid for since February and I never received. They told me they would refund me and I've sent three emails by now and I still don't have a refund. Tropical orchids in Portugal were very, very quick to apologize. I mean, these things happen. I'm not disappointed or cross or anything. I just wished I could have seen it at the unboxing itself. I was too focused on my white bridal. So this is probably not gonna make it. But, you know, never give up on an orchid and we'll see what she does. But I certainly didn't buy a replacement Chantilly Lace Twinkle so that I would be babying another one, hoping to eventually get one to bloom. That was not the point of the exercise. Okay, so let's move over, heading towards the east side. Colmenara Masai Red, chugging along, growing well, right here. <laughs> Look at where these balls are gonna be. Oh, it's a beast. It's a beautiful beast. I love this orchid. I just wish I had the space to make sure it grew so beautifully because eventually these leaves are going to struggle with my cold temperatures. But, you know, oh, I have to have her. But look at what these growths are doing. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful orchid insanity. My Fias, the same thing. You see how I've put her up against the hedge because of the wind. It's either the wind or the sun. When I put her into the blooming alley more protected, the sun beats down on the leaves because of the angle right now and would destroy them. So I moved her here into the breezeway where she doesn't get any direct sun on the leaves and it's taken a leaf out already. And I'm trying so hard to protect another leaf. So I've put it up into the hedge a little bit, just <sighs> trying to support her, that's all. What a shame, but you know, yeah, I like this orchid as well. I have a mission for 2022, hopefully to get some really nice spikes that grow clean and doesn't become a nursery for aphids and the ants. So these growths want to grow. 
they haven't really pushed out stronger. So this is the new growth of 2021. And then it's just trying this. I don't know what this is all about, whether it's going to happen during the winter or I get a second flush in spring. Who knows? But I'm hoping that these growths here that have matured, even though they're going to be looking ratty, that they will actually give me spikes. A little bloom interlude. We had a look at some Tolumnias recently. And this one is hanging by the hedge, just so it doesn't bobble around and compromise this spike. This is golden fire. And then here, oh, project, project, look what's happening with Dendrobium nobili variety coxonianum. New roots at the base and my hands are itching to get it out of the bark and into Lekka. This is the time. This is when I should be doing it. But there's a lot of fiddling to remove the bark from the other roots. And fiddling is not exactly ideal with my right hand the way it is at the moment. I don't have the confidence that I can take a project like this on. That will take me an hour, an hour and a half to complete. But it's already losing some leaves and I really want this in Lekka. You cannot imagine because I don't want them to now attach to the bark. And then I have to wait another six months. I don't. Anyway, fingers crossed that my right hand can handle it and get this done before they get much, much longer. I don't like to transition orchids when the new roots are already at a certain length. I just don't like to do that. Here is my golden cellar opened this morning. She's transitioning into my blooming alley for reasons. Look, from the east side, she's going to the blooming alley and I just wanted her here so that I could show you without dropping her if I was to turn the pot and lose the strength in my right hand. Sorry, I keep repeating that, but things are a little bit awkward at the moment. There is a chiffon kind of lemony fragrance to her. When I say chiffon, it's almost like a Chantilly cream lemon, something very delicate, very light. But meanwhile, she's only just open. And I love those little flares. First time this orchid has bloomed with those flares. She skipped last year, so 2020, no blooms. She bloomed for me in 2019, but here we are. She made up for last year by giving me two blooms this year. So we'll see more of her. Not in tomorrow's video, because when I filmed tomorrow's video, she was still in bud. But I didn't want to miss out on doing an end of October bloom extravaganza. So if you like blooms, my goodness, I have a lot of them. Yay! and I could make a beautiful display and call it my October bloom extravaganza. So be on the lookout for that tomorrow. Meanwhile, Golden Cellar was not open for that. Okay, let's go to the East Rack and let me show you what else we can anticipate in the coming weeks. Let's start with the next coming months because I've got my Fred Clarkiara After Dark Black Pearl there. One spike, the other spike is on the other side of that bulb. Yep, in a couple of months, maybe have that beautiful spicy ginger fragrance for Christmas this year because these spikes are early. I've never had them start this early, so this is a good one. So that's in spike and I've got two more spikes on Jack of Diamonds. Look at that, left and right. Now, last year, Jack of Diamonds started to give me a male spike, which I promptly snapped off. And I could identify it as a male spike because it was thinner, more delicate looking. If these are two more female spikes, then I'm okay with that. But if these are two male spikes, then they are confusing me because they look like female spikes. <laughs> Either way, Jack of Diamonds is kicking it, doing well, and I'm very happy to see whatever it can give to me. And we've just seen Ancelia Africana in a video recently, so let's go down here to the first shelf of my east side blooming alley. This is Happy Holiday. And that is one big, big bulge in there. There's buds happening, and I'm going to try and open that sheath. If it happens easily, great. If not, then I'm going to snip it because the air is very, very dry and I don't want anything to get scrunched up. Normally, I don't cut my sheaths, 
but she's late in the season and now I have some super dry air. The wind is blowing hard. I do not want to compromise those buds. Then I have my <laughs> Rincolelio digbiana crossed with Coilostylus ciliaris, also in bud. And there's two of them here, which is amazing. I'm not going to fiddle around, but there's two. If I fiddle around, eventually there may only be one. But yep, she's on the move as well. Very, very happy to see that. Love how she grows a sheath within a sheath and then buds. She's such a tease. And a new growth here on my Myrmocococatlia, Louise Fuchs. Check this out. Beautiful, huh? We got ourselves a new growth. Very unexpected. So I'm going to turn that around because she's not supposed to face towards the light. She wants to face away from the light because I want that growth to train its way back up into the pot. Isn't that pretty though? Ah, oh, love it. Catlia iricolor, the slow poke, another one. <laughs> so this is the growth that's been going all season. Very happy, at least it is growing a new growth. So we'll turn her around as well, facing away from the light once again. Same principle, get the growth to grow upright and then not as much support is needed. My Dawiana here is growing a growth there. You can see the eye in the back. That would be the second growth to start. This was the growth of 2021, which is gorgeous. I love it. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Not quite there yet though. And I don't think this growth will be either. I'm sorry, but this growth does not look like the size of the growth that came previously. I know it looks big on camera, but mm -mm. If this one blooms, I'm going to be so happy that I was wrong. But when this growth started to come out as an eye, I was like, oh, we might get some blooms. But you see, nothing happened. And this growth looks smaller. Time of year, time of year. Never mind. That growth will give me some more roots. And that is fantastic for any orchid grower. Roots. We love roots. No matter how crowded the pot gets. Okay. In the back here, I have Vinosa Wabash Valley in bud. Woohoo! And there's another spike tucked in. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Where are you? Being hidden by my duri gun. But uh, there's a spike. <laughs> oh, here. There are the buds tucked in there. So we're going to get Wabash Valley again. Very, very late in the season. Who cares? At least it is going to give us some blooms. My Francis Fox has been doing very, very well. It is fully rooted in the pot. I like the look of the roots. They are so much healthier as well. My Grincolelia digbiana here, the growth is growing beautifully. One growth, one. Dang, I was hoping for two. But these eyes are not budging. I'm not saying there's not still time, but oh, this growth has already progressed so much. I'm actually thinking I'm not going to get a second growth this time around. Hakuna Matata, one growth. Stop being greedy, woman, because look at what's going on in the back here. All right. The leaf drop aside, because that is irritating me, but it seems the stem is OK. But this is my Chrysnetia green light. Remember, we did a care collab. And if you didn't, I'll try and link that. If I can remember to do that, note to self, it didn't bloom for me. Well, it's going to way, way late. There's a spike here. If I can get that one little bud to bloom, I can consider that a second spike over there. And tucked back here, carefully, there's more buds right here. So I put her right back into her position where she was from Jump Street last year in 2020. And I didn't do that at the beginning of this season because I thought, well, now that she's a bloomer, doesn't matter. I'll keep her more protected in the blooming alley. Turns out that was too shady. After the care collab, I thought, well, that's it. You're just going to go back here. And I wasn't thinking anything of it. And <laughs> she's still going to bloom. That makes me quite happy. So I'm not going to moan too much about you. Anywho, as we go downstairs, one shelf. Let me make sure that there's something we can see here. My pastoral innocence that she is still empty. 
I got a fantastic sheath on a Tenebrosa back there, Lelia Tenebrosa Aurea, right back there with all the gorgeous freckling. It's amazing. I don't know if that's going to bloom, but we've had two years on the trot now where she's practicing. And then here is my Lelia Pacavia. That is the later growth from early in the season. The first one bloomed. This one, I uh, don't think it's going to bloom. If it's going to stay empty until spring next year, that's fine. Excuse me while I double check what is going on here. I don't like that. We'll double check when I've done filming. And the second, well, actually now this would be the third growth of the season. It's happily growing away in the back there. So Lelia Pacavia, I think is going to need a big cleanup next year. Uh, depending, depending on when the roots grow is when we go in. My Zagarig Wax African Beauty is going bonkers with roots. I like to see that. And other than that, well, my Lelia Perinii quick update. The bloom lasted 12 days. Yep, didn't get three weeks out of this one again, even though she was purdy, but I'm still enjoying the look of this sheath. That's amazing. Uh, what a beautiful artistic structure still. Yeah, 12 days short-lived and she's done now for the rest of the year until she starts to mosey down with roots sometime in late December, beginning of January. And my golf green hair pig, that sheath there is still not fattening up, which is okay. I'm not complaining either. That's fine. This orchid has been through a lot at the beginning of the season. Just the sheath is fine by me. There's another eye there and whether it wants to start to do something or not. Or if that sheath starts to bloom for me in spring, who knows? Not bothered. All right, down here, uh, let me get you in without knocking anything over. My dendrobium, my little speciosum, the third growth of the season. That was the second one, it scrunched up in the back, which was a bit annoying and concerning. And the third one came out in the front. Perfect. I bought myself some more time. And I hope the fourth one will stay and come out on the front. And that the orchid is intelligent enough to understand. There's no more room back there. Let's grow this way. Gyrat Greenhorn is rescued. Roots in the pot. One Orangus leonis is in spike. Actually, there are two spikes, and it is also growing a new leaf. The other one back here is growing a new leaf. No spikes. That's okay. we got to work with one. At least one is trying again. And then all my little seedlings down here, they're doing okay. Nothing really to report. Leptotis has a spike in there, which is going to take forever, probably until February, if it doesn't dry up before then. And I'm very happy to say that my Tibicinus has handled the move into this bowl very, very well. I still have some beautiful blooms on my Van der Leppard Yawn. And I'm just showing you these because I forgot to include them in my video for tomorrow. So, yep, Leopard Yawn <laughs> also still in bloom. In my blooming alley. Surprise, surprise. Check this out. Victoria Regina will bless us with some out-of-season blooms. How about that, huh? That is so cool. Everybody else up here is just waiting, guess, for the really cold temperatures. That would not include me. But eventually all these leaves will have dropped. I also have my Nafert's Alex Poli in Spike. The other day I saw spikes. I'm like, are you... Are you? Are you? <laughs> Look at that. That's one. And there's another one down here somewhere. I know I saw you. Don't, don't do this to me now. I saw two spikes, if not three. Anyway, I won't waste your time. Proof, there is one. I know there is another one. I, duh, right here. So there's two. That's the start. That's the start. I'm happy to see that, especially after the video where I was like so proud of this orchid gaining momentum. Let's check the heat of the leaves. Now you're okay. 
Another thing I wanted to also show in that video about momentum is Auranti Flameo. This is the orchid I got from Michael McCarthy, Melissa Walker and the Orchid Room a year ago. Can you believe it? And look at the growth that I grew last year. You can see how beautifully that has increased in size, at least I hope you can, to the previous growth when it arrived. Look at what's going on here now. <laughs> yeah, I, I had more to include in that video. I just, I just thought I would, I would show this in the tour. And I hope people will see this and um, know that how much I appreciate this orchid and your kind gesture from a year ago. But yeah, what a difference. I mean, this is good. This is how she arrived. <laughs> This was, I was happy with this. I thought, yeah, I can show them this. They'll be happy. I'm taking good care of her. But what do you think of all this? <laughs> Look at this. It's, it's not even stopped yet. But so beautiful. I love, I love the anthocyanin in there. Gosh, I hope all that was in focus. <laughs> all right, going down. Twinkle, snooze fest. We can move on. Waiting to coordinate a date for upload on a care collab. Oh, I'm using my twinkle as a marker, I'm telling you. Yeah, I think I'm not waiting for mine to bloom. I just want to make sure that we have lots and lots of blooms for that care collab. So yeah, like I said, snooze fest. Twinkle is in spike, whoop de doo Until it blooms, don't look at it. <laughs> and here are some things I want to show you. Not, not, not things like this. Tomorrow is the day. Here is my singing cordata. That growth, when I cleaned her up, dead roots, alive roots, brassavola root phenomenons. Look at it. It's going to bloom this time of year. That's a first for me. So that would be a second bloom within the same season, which is great. I love it. Love it when orchids do that. Just have to be sure that I don't mess it up. That's why it's here, tucked in between other structures. <laughs> and up here, is my wildcat also in spike? So you see, we're not going to be without blooms. Maybe starting December, things are gonna get a little bit tight, but for the time being, we are not going to be without blooms. So wildcat golden red star in spike again after a year of almost losing her because I messed it up and then cutting the spike off so that she could rest and grow stronger. This time she can bloom. And we can go to the purpurata sheaths, but there's a video coming out about those. So let's just go down here. Got golden peacock with more buds here. But that would be the third spike. The second spike is tucked in back there, still facing away from us because one bud is pending to open. That is why she has not been turned around yet. But there's blooms coming there and blooms coming here. And I'm also very proud to say, let me get Lady Chatterley out of the way. She is also featuring tomorrow, so not your turn, not your turn. Here's my Embraer crossed with Capricornu. And um, how can I do this without blinding you by the afternoon? There, I'm going to get blooms again. Very cute little peach colored blooms, tiny, tiny blooms. But anyway, they are blooms. And I think, <laughs> I think that's about it. Oh, maybe not. Uh, let me show you. Ah, yes, my Prismartocarpa is growing a fabulous new growth. Already starting. Love it. My Cattleya Maxima, the sheath has a shadow in it, as you can see. So eventually, eventually Maxima will be back. And I hope I get those hot pink blooms again this year. CG rolling back here. Uh, yeah, so you see this growth over there? It's got a sheath in it. <laughs> I don't know. I've never had a CG rolling bloom end of November, beginning of December. Who knows? Surprise me. <laughs> and then Guatemalensis right here has also got chubbiness in those sheaths. Now, this is a sheath within a sheath grower. So that shadow means nothing. That's normal. But I do feel that maybe there's a bulge in there. I'm not going to squeeze it when it blooms, when it feels like blooming. Well, we've got two. 
they can make up their minds who wants to bloom first or all at the same time. I'm not going to leave you though without showing you her featuring tomorrow more close-ups. Yeah, don't miss out on the October bloom extravaganza here. There we go, Tunya Good Life, also featuring tomorrow. The fragrance here, you guys, I can't, I just can't tell you, but that's not this one. That's this one. So I've got cinnamon here, intense sugary cinnamon. And then Dr. Pepper, well, no, <laughs> Mr. Pepper, cracked pepper over there. So cinnamon and pepper, like I say, I do like a little kick of spice in my desserts. And these two just, oh, mouth-watering. And with mouth-watering on my mind, maybe I can have you mouth-water for tomorrow and give you a little bit of a, not a cliffhanger as such, but please watch tomorrow's videos if you're into blooms. I struggled with putting them all on a shelf to show to you all at once, so it's a little bit improvised. And as you saw, I forgot my Van der Leppe Dion, but oh my goodness, and I'm about to forget another one. All right, back to the west side we go. And there we go, away from the harsh light, away from the shadows. Now I'm just going to say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching using my gorgeous new stylus, Lou Sneary the second spike of 2021 at the end of October. I shake my head, but I like what I see and I don't care and I'm not complaining. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Please stay safe and I really appreciate your time joining me for the end of October little wrap up on my patio. We'll see what November brings, how that pans out. But for the time being, please stay safe. Thanks for watching. Bye.